All right, guys, how are we doing today? Um, I've been crash coursing Corel Draw. I haven't used it in years. <laughs> I remember why uh, I switched in the first place now. But yeah, so I have a new mic set up here. Um, trying to make this a little more enjoyable or, it, you know, it's not annoying to listen to and the audio is right and all that good stuff. So here we go. Um, you ordered the vector pattern bundle. I went ahead and issued version 2.0 yesterday and I resent out promo personal promo codes to everyone that's already made the purchase so you can re-download and all that good stuff. And once you get it downloaded, um, this is what you're going to see, uh, minus this right here. Um, so you go ahead and extract all the files and it's going to come up as, um, you know, the guide, which is just the images showing you what's in there with the individual elements. And then I went ahead and broke down the, uh, the bundle into three sets and this it's a lot more organized now. And, um, yeah, set three is the more complex patterns, which is only a few in there. Um, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know why I'm like, I'm so nervous doing this. It's like, it's weird. It's just a tutorial. It shouldn't be this complex, but for some reason, so bear with me if I sound like I'm a little nervous, I don't know why. But yeah. So go ahead and, um, Open up set two, and what you're gonna see here are all the um, the files that are included. But what if you're using Corel, which is what this tutorial is for, um, you're gonna wanna open the EPS files, not the AI. If you do that, you're gonna get like weird lines and stuff like that. And um, yeah, so go ahead and open up. Um, well, I want you to see one thing too. You're gonna see there's a set two B and then set two set two is this right here. No, it's this one. Yeah, this is a set two and it's the elements with the patterns themselves and then part two and then set two and then um, B is just the individual patterns themselves. And you can, um, if you're following along, you can open up either one. It doesn't um, matter too much what we're doing here. I think my computer's kind of freaking out. Um, oh no. Okay. All right. So we are going to, let's see which one I'm going to grab. This one, because I want to show you how to edit. So like, we got to make a, and then if you have my templates, go ahead and open up the template you need or a template you want to use for this. Um, if you have the clocks, this is what you get. Um, when you open the EPS file, go ahead and remove these. Just click and drag and then delete. And then I want you to uh, open a new file. Mainly because I never recommend editing in your source files, just so you don't get confused down the road when you need to open it up and it's another project and you're like, ah, oh. it's just nice to have your clean slates ready to go to work with and all that good stuff. So new document, I recommend tabloid size. Okay. And, um, do tall ways. Cause that's what I laid out the artboards for on the templates. So you get, um, your new artboard. Go ahead and copy your new document, edit, paste in view. This prevents it from pasting somewhere off in the distance. Hmm. All right, so we got that. So you can close out this one. No, you don't want to save. All right, so now you go back to template you want to use, you edit, copy, you, well, select it, and then edit, copy, then go back to your new document, and then edit, paste in view. And 
H is the pan. So if you do that, then you can click and drag yourself around. Like that. The hotkeys, like I, the main, <laughs> the, the, the biggest thing with Adobe Illustrator that I can uh, relate to like straight off the bat is, I don't know if that's better for you guys. Um, it's like the, uh, the pan filter to my face. I'm not used to working with a big thing on my face, the microphone, all that. Um, but yeah, so the hotkeys, just the, the general ease of use, like of, of, of being able to manipulate and do what you want to do easily. Adobe Illustrator has that. It, it, it's a lot more restricted and backwards with Corel. And so, yeah, it's a little frustrating for me, especially for, you know, all I use is Illustrator. So bear with me. Um, so yeah, so we got the, the Glock template, the gun you're working on, the pattern you want to use. Now you're like, I don't want the pattern to be that big. So what do I do here, Steven? And I'm going to be like, I got you. All right. So you're going to go over here and you're going to want to open your properties tool panel. Okay. And it's going to show you like, if you have a stroke outline, all the tools for that kind of stuff. And you're going to click on fill if you don't have it clicked. And it's going to show this. And what's really awesome is the pattern fills, the swatches that I made in Adobe Illustrator, you got it here. So if you were to make a random shape like that, and you want to fill it with a color, or you don't really need to, you go over here to attributes eyedropper. You click on the pattern, click on that, boom. It's a pattern fill. And that's awesome. That's exactly what I, I, knew, I wanted it to do. But, okay, so I digress. So here, we're like, all right, you know, we need to shrink this down. Um, we want the pattern to be smaller, you know, really cool looking. So you, it, if you open your properties panel, it's probably going to look like this. Make sure you click this down arrow. It's going to show the options. And down here, you want, you know, the shapes to be smaller. So make sure the lock is locked for the aspect ratio. And we're going to make it 0.5. Beautiful. Let's zoom in here. That's a really cool pattern. That's what we're wanting. All right. Now, with uh, these um, here, what you're going to do is I had them, uh, yeah, there we go. So select and then right click, break curve apart. And you're gonna wanna do this for every section. If there's a faster way, definitely let me know. Like I said, it, it's been a while since I've uh, used Corel. So I'm just going off of what I found out to be the easiest without having a lot of time to get back into Corel. So break curve apart, control K is the hotkey. So that's what I'm gonna do from here, so. All right, once you have all the shapes like that, then you wanna, it's, there's gonna be two stack layers and you're gonna wanna delete the top one. So after you uh, break them apart, just click, delete, click, delete. And what this is, is it's the inside of the uh, template patterns, it's, getting that shape which is what you want for when you uh, do the thing all right so now that's what we want so click on the pistol grip and then you're going to go back over here attributes eyedropper and with one of the sections selected you click that and then it gives you the fill thing and you go back and re-click on the object you have selected and from this zoomed out view it looks weird you're like oh no what is that but it's just part of the graphics and how it renders it real time and what you're going to do is you're going to want to do this for every every um 
every one. So I do that and attributes eyedropper. Oops, clicked the wrong thing. Crap. So I use the hotkeys in Adobe Illustrator to drive me nuts. All right, attributes eyedropper, boom. go and that's how you get it and then um, you, know, you can group these together lay it out however you you prefer to you can delete this and then you want to export or save as um, in your desired uh, format for whatever you are using easy CAD all that DXF EPS um, and yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it now in the Adobe illustrator version, uh, I showed you how like you could erase, um, around the template and you could do that with this, but Corel is very weird with their eraser. And so it takes a lot more time to, um, to erase for some reason. Um, and they make it just make it weird. So that's what I laid out earlier when I was practicing. But yeah, so there's that. Now, you know, we can do this again. We're like, what if I want? Oh, man. They just called and they want a different pattern. For some reason, they're allergic to that pattern. So go back to um, the thing. Let me click that one. Edit. Copy. Edit. Paste. Crap. Yeah, that's why you want to paste in the view. There you go. All right. And uh, the pattern is a little too big, so we can resize it, make sure it's locked in the transformations and the properties uh, tool panel. And let's make it 0.5 or 0.75. Let's do that. Cool. Let me zoom in here and see. Yeah. I think that'll work. Yeah, maybe we'll do 0.5. And that's right here. Oh, I keep doing that. Sorry. H. Okay. So now we want to change the pattern. So attributes eyedropper, click on the new one, and then we click on that. Pretty cool. And that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Yeah, you know, I'm actually <laughs> I thought it was going to be a lot more complicated than that, but it's it's really not. That's pretty much it. Because when you export it, it'll flatten out the uh, the pattern. And yeah, so there's that. Let's see any more cool ones. Let's try this one and then try it in the uh, the test run, but it should work the same. Edit, copy. Edit, paste in view. Click on the uh, template, attributes eyedropper, click and click, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And yeah, like I said, once it's that, you export and then uh, your desired uh, file format and setup for EasyCAD and let it rip. It actually looks pretty cool.
Yeah, I want to do that. I want to see pictures of this one. I'll give a discount. You do this one, I'll give someone like a new a promo code just because I actually think that one looks cool. I didn't think it was. Oh, hell yeah. Mm. All right. I like it. And that's it. And uh, so, yeah, I want to thank everybody um, who's purchased a bundle already. Um, if anybody runs any further issues or has any questions or wants to figure out, you know, a way to do a certain thing a certain way, I have no problem in, uh, you know, helping you guys and figuring that out. And, um, and yeah. And so thank you for your time. Please let me know if you can too the uh, the quality of this one compared to the other one, um, audio wise. You know, hopefully it was worth <laughs> it was worth it. You know, the the stress wasn't too bad. Now that we're done here, that one looks really cool though. And yeah, that'll be it. Oh 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 oh! Actually, let me show you one thing I saw too. If you're gonna be using these patterns a lot and using a lot of different ones. One thing I noticed was, is you can save these patterns like you can in Illustrator. The swatches that I uh, showed in there. Um, and you're going to click this, save as new, right here in the properties panel, in the vector pattern. And then, you know, you can name this one um, Waffle House. Because the place is delicious. And the category, you can make it a category. And, uh, you know, name it frag out firearms patterns. And save. And that'll save in your, um, this thing. Yeah, right there. I see that? All right, let's do it again. I'm going to save this one. I like this one. I'm probably going to use it a lot. So you click it and go to properties panel, vector pattern, click that big plus button, pops up, title asset, and we'll name this one San Antonio. Rocks. And then you want to save it under. Well, I don't know why it didn't pop up. Frag out firearms. And as we, as I mentioned before, if you want to make it smaller, it's easy. You just click on the pattern. And you're like, yeah, it's too big. Make sure you're in the fill settings in your properties tool menu. You see all this right here. And then you size it to how you want it. And like it shows those like weird lines. It's all right. It's just, like I said, the graphics card and how it renders the live data. You just got to, once you zoom in, you'll see it's not there. It's an illusion. Like if David Blaine was a computer program. Cheese it. If you don't know what I'm referring to, Google David Blaine Cheese It's.